Hello everyone, welcome to another episode of Arishtam Home Brewing Guide. Today we are going to cover chapter 41 of the book um, Arishtam Home Brewing Guide for Beers, Wines and Probiotics. The chapter 41 talks about measurement of alcohol. Here we are going to talk about five different methods which is used to measure of alcohol. It broadly can be categorized into two categories. The category number one is called the direct method. The direct method essentially talks about measuring the physical and the chemical properties of your final beverage to compute how much percentage of alcohol is there um, uh, in the packaged product. Now this, is, uh, this can be done using three methods. The first method is called the distillation method. It is used heavily by FSSAI and excise department which are the two one is the food and safety department and the second is the alcohol, uh, alcohol and tobacco enforcement department they use that to measure the percentage of alcohol and uh, compute the taxes um, uh, taxes on your beverage now what they do is they are going to take one liter of, of your solution and they are going to distill it if they distill beer you they will get some uh, uh, some whiskey if they distill uh, wines they will get brandy if they are going to distill uh, the distill sugar wash, like the one that is shown here, they will get rum. Now, uh, in that final distillate, they are going to uh, use a density meter, something like a hydrometer, but a different hydrometer, which is called a density meter, to measure that density. And with that, they will compute the percentage of alcohol that was there in the original um, uh, liquid. That if you send any of your samples for a laboratory test, most likely they would be using this method. The second method is called the ebulometer. That requ requires use of a very precise uh, thermometer, usually a digital thermometer of accuracy 0.1 or higher degree Celsius. We are going to measure the, uh, the uh, changes in the boiling point of distilled water compared to your beverage. As we all know, alcohol um, uh, forms vapors readily, which means that its boiling point is lower. So this small minute changes in the boiling point is measured by an ebulometer to compute and estimate the amount of alcohol that is there. The third method is called the surface tension method. So here we are going to use uh, your sample and we are going to take a few drops and put it into a capillary tube. When you put it into a capillary tube, the length of the tube that the capillary is able to hold will give you a good estimate of what is the surface tension um, uh, of your beverage. Since alcohol or any dissolved solutions alter the surface tension, it can be used to compute, reverse compute the amount of alcohol that is there in your beverage. Now, the, all these three requires access to uh, complicated um, equipments and a laboratory. So, uh, since home brewers don't have that luxury, we are going to talk about indirect method. Firstly, why is it called indirect method? Because rather than measuring the percentage of alcohol in your final product, what we are going to do is we are going to uh, see how your um, beverage uh, uh, changed during the fermentation process from start to finish. And with that, we will estimate how much of the sugar got converted into alcohol. Now for that, there are two methods which are used uh, widely. First is called the hydrometer. And the second is called a Briggs refractometer. Now, what is a hydrometer? Most of you would have uh, encountered the hydrometer during your high school chemistry classes. It is uh, usually uh, alcohol uh, hydrometer reading is part of your class 12th syllabus. But I'll give you a quick refresher course. So this is a uh, is a boat like flotation device. Uh, when we insert this in the liquid. The bottom bulb will display uh, uh, displays the liquid equal equal to the uh, weight of the hydrometer. Now, as the hydrometer uh, um, as the density uh, increases, less and less amount of uh, less and less amount of liquid will get displaced, and hence your hydrometer will rise. We will measure the uh, the small changes uh, in the rise and fall of the hydrometer to compute your density. Now, I am going to gently lower this hydrometer. In a solution. Couple of things to remember when you are using a hydrometer, this is also listed in the book, would be there are eight points. 
Firstly, you need to ensure that your liquid is free of any dissolved gases. So if it's bubbling, fizzing, if it's bubbling and fizzing, you cannot use it. The reason is those carbon dioxide particles will stick to the hydrometer and alter the density of the hydrometer. The, uh, the, uh, the, uh, um, the second thing is you always measure the lower meniscus. So it's uh, here shown in the diagram alone. Always measure at the eye level and you, uh, you measure the lower meniscus which is the flat surface, not the uh, higher surface. You always measure the lower meniscus. There are six other points which I mentioned in the book. Please do feel to read back. Now, we have lowered it. We allowed this hydrometer to settle down, which means it is no longer rotating. It is no longer moving up and down. And the top level is free of any bubbles. Now, as you can see here, this hydrometer is reading at 19 bricks. What does 19 bricks correspond to? Well, let me take the hydrometer out. Okay? This is a triple scale hydrometer, uh, which is also color coded. The color coding is for our visual aid. If you find a hydrometer in the market which is not color coded, you can use it. It is, uh, it is equal uh, and as much accurate as this one. Now, this has the bricks level here, as you can see my hydrometer uh, was sunk to this level, which is 19%. Which means that every uh, liter of the solution had 190 grams of sugar in it. Now, the, when I say sugar, sugar is a, uh, is a general term used for a variety of different fermentable um, uh, sugars which, uh, which can be there. If you are using uh, grape juice, it can be glucose. If you are using fruit, ju uh, fruit juice, it will be fructose. If you are using uh, the, uh, the wort from the, uh, from the beer grain mashing, it will be maltose or maltodextrins. And the fourth thing would be uh, if you are using table sugar, which is um, uh, uh, sucrose, which we have used here, it will be uh, the sucrose. But you can use them interchangeably. So you can Google up how to change uh, switch between specific gravity to bricks, which is already there in this uh, table, from bricks to degree plateau to uh, uh, degree bound. Let me keep this back. You have to be very careful about hydrometers. The reason is they are uh, they are uh, made of glass. Uh, they are glass bulbs, which are um, uh, and being cylindrical, they tend to roll off the surface. So always keep them in a rectangular uh, a rectangular carton and keep them away from children, make sure that they do not roll off your table. I've lost more than a dozen hydrometers because of floating off. Yeah. Now, we are going to talk about another method, which we, uh, we said, which is called the refractometer. Refractometer, essentially, uh, what it does is, it measures the refractive index of the solution. So when it measures the refractive index of the solution, uh, I'm going to take a few drops of it. So I took two drops of it. I'm closing this. And I'm going to see it. As you can see, it is showing as 19%. You would see in a refractor, uh, in a, uh, in a refractor meter, a, um, a horizon in which the top level is blue and the bottom level is white. We measure uh, the horizon, which is a separator line between the blue and the white horizon against a vertical scale to find out what is it, uh, the change in the refractive index. The water would read at 0 bricks and this solution uh, is reading at 19 bricks. Okay. Now the question arises is, you are you are measuring sugar. How how does how does it help me measure alcohol? Now this is your initial gravity, original gravity. We are going to use a very simple formula, which is uh, shown in page one fifty two of the book, which talks about how uh, the alcohol percentage can be computed using the original gravity and the final gravity. Now this is the original gravity. 
after one to four weeks, depending upon what uh, culture you are using and what style of fermentation you are there, we'll wait till the fermentation has stopped, which means all the bubbling has stopped, and we are again going to use a hydrometer. We, now we will find that the density is much lower. So since the density is much lower, the sugar has been converted into um, alcohol, ethanol, to be precise. Because of this, uh, so all, uh, uh, the reading that we get after, after the end of the fermentation is called the final gravity. The difference between the two can be f uh, fed into this formula, which is 132.7 original gravity minus final gravity to compute the alcohol percentage. If you, are, uh, if you don't want to use the formula, uh, you can use the reference table as well, which is mentioned on the page 153 of the book, as well as it is also printed on the triple scale hydrometer. Now, um, you, uh, I showed you two tools, which one to use with. So let me just talk about the pros and cons about hydrometer versus refractometers. Now, refractometer is a very powerful tool. Uh, the, re uh, the reason behind that is A, uh, rather than uh, being made of glass, it is, it is made of a much, much sturdier uh, material, so which means that it can, uh, it can handle a little bit of rough handling, which is good for me. The second thing is, rather than using a 250ml or a 1 liter uh, solution uh, as in this case, we only use 1 or 2 drops. Now, 1 or 2 drops is, becomes advantageous for you because if you have your own orchard, where you are growing your own fruits uh, and grapes or your own vineyard, you can easily go there, take the sample. You don't have to uh, pluck a lot of fruits, juice it there. You can even take it to your fruit market or your sabji mandi to uh, pick out the ripest fruits for your fermentation purposes. The disadvantage here would be that it can only measure original gravity. It does not measure the final gravity. Uh, the hydrometer, on the other hand, requires a much larger sample but it is considered much more accurate. It is sold under various uh, names. Somebody uh, uh, in Europe, it is called mustometer. In uh, US, it is called triple scale hydrometer. In India, it is called a simple hydrometer. If you do not find a, a, a triple scale hydrometer, you can also use a hydrometer which has a, a, a range of 0 0.96 to 1.16 range. So that is the range in which we, uh, uh, most of your home brews will be falling. A uh, couple of points to keep, uh, keep note uh, would be that uh, any dissolved CO2 has to be expelled out. There are multiple ways to dissolve it, uh, to remove it. First would be vigorously shaking the solution. The second would be gently heating it. Uh, if you have access to a vacuum pump, you can use a vacuum pump to, uh, to suck out the carbon dioxide as well. Dissolved CO2 alters the, uh, um, uh, alters the gravity of your beverage. Also, there are any air molecules which get stuck to the glass jar will also uh, cause it to float up and lower your gravity. I know this video was a little bit too technical, but do reach out to us, uh, drop us a comment, uh, write us an email at brew at the rate if you have any more queries. I hope you find it useful. Thank you.